everybody, it's Old School Nerd. I have the privilege to sit down with Francesco, the lead singer of Winrose. I've had a conversation with him before, but we're coming back full circle again. They have a new album coming out tomorrow called Troll Slayer. We're going to talk about this album. We're going to talk about all the different things that have happened to this band. Yes. Diggy Diggy Hole remixes, the dance parties, the unique live shows. And yes, we are going to talk about the thing that everyone wants to know about when it comes to Troll Slayer. Dwarves in space? Hey everybody, here we are. There's my buddy over there. Uh, how are you, Francesco? It's been a bit. We, we talked about a year and a half ago, actually. It's been a while. Yeah. Thank you very much for inviting me. I mean, it's a, it's a pleasure to be here. I think that we talked talk last time for, uh, uh, for Warfront, right? For Warfront. And what an album that was. Man, what a debut, monstrous album. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it was something that was a little bit strange for us because it was composed during the pandemic so yeah. we didn't know what to expect and it was the first album after the album of diggy diggy hole now winter saga so all the expectation were you know the hype was very high and uh all the expectations needed to be uh you know satisfied for that album so and i think the end of i think you guys did that but I want to talk about Troll Slayer. Yeah. Because we're talking, uh, we're talking today, uh, the, the day we're talking right now, if people don't know this, we're talking on Monday, you know, and uh, this video comes out on Thursday. And in the next day, October 4th, Troll Slayer drops. Um, we, you, you mentioned Diggy Diggy Hole, which is, of course, what everybody, even if they're not into metal, Everyone knows that song. They it's it became viral on social media because of it. it just and it really set Winter Saga up. We it just we kind of went nuts. And then, like you just said at the beginning of this this interview, then Warfront comes out. But Troll Slayer is it kind of a little bit of both? Because as I'm looking at it and I'm listening to it, I'm seeing a little bit of both. There's heavy darkness. That that dwarven power and 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 magical worlds, but yet there's a little fun stuff in here too. So tell me a little bit about Troll Slayer. Okay, Troll Slayer. Obviously, for this album, we wanted to get back the keys of dwarf metal, and uh, we wanted to make, let's say, take whatever. Uh, uh, it's good from the both albums. So from Winter Saga, we got, let's say, the party, the party side, the party songs, the uh, the fun parts, and also the folk stuff that there was in uh, in that album. From Warfront, we kept the the sound and uh, the experience, the feelings that it was giving. The sound, for example, of the guitar of the of the mix in general. So this album, it's a mix. Yes, I mean, it's probably uh, the best way to define it because uh, it's like exactly what is a dwarf metal, but with a lot of experience more. I mean, from the moment that everything exploded, as we said, like Diggy Diggy Old, it exploded. And then uh, now we have like almost... Uh, yeah, no, we have five years more of experience, so uh, we just found uh, another dimension, another evolution of the of ourselves. Well, you have um, Dance of the Axes, and then the Great Feast Underground, which to me is like it, it's very they're they're they're. You know what? Those are the songs when you play them live on your tour. You know, the entire crowd is dancing. Yeah, I mean. Uh, the, for for Winrose, you have the bands that you know there's going to be a, a pit, there's going to be some walls of death, there's going to be all this flailing around. But Winrose, it's like let's be it's like a drunken dwarf underground party where people just dance and 
There's an energy in your live performances that everybody talks about that I have yet to see. When you guys came through the US last time, I was not even here. I was on a trip somewhere and everyone was telling me how I missed out. I know I'm still upset about it, but I will get, I will no get to you guys, I promise. Um, so tell us about those- It will those... be for the next time. Oh, I know, right? Um, no so, so in these two tracks, Dance of the Axes and The Great Feast Underground, is, is it similar to trying to make sure people realize that there is not just the dark themes and the themes about war and, and struggle and, and those things, but there's also that, that celebrational feel in Winrose as well? Let's say that we, when we compose, we don't pay much attention to what we are composing or what is the, the business requirements. I mean, uh, we just compose what we feel in the moment. So as I said before in other interviews, the album is like a sort of photograph no, of the band in one moment. So as we say, the war front, you, you described it like dark, and it's true because during pandemic, there was nothing to, I mean, for us, we didn't have uh, like a sort of uh, uh, inspiration for make party songs, no? I mean, uh, the world stopped for three years. Our job was basically 0% for three, four years. So, I mean, uh, it was very hard time for us. So we just compose what we have, what we feel in the moment. Now with Trust Layer, we are uh, like 100% in the spirit of the dwarves. And we felt also, uh, we had also good ideas for the party songs, you know, in a style of drunken dwarves, as you say. So Dance of the Axis is for sure a song, a Windrose song with the Windrose imprinting, but get, uh, you know, uh, intended to to get some, uh, let's say, some inspiration from a, a music genre that is not even anymore a thing. For example, like in Europe, Viking metal, folk metal. I mean, it was very strong like 15 years ago. Now it's not uh, anymore there. We grew up with this. So we say, you know what, we should do, uh, you know, we, we feel like uh, there is something that we can uh, also implement in our songs. And uh, the Great Feast Underground is something very that we had very fun. I mean, big fun uh, doing it. And uh, uh, I guess that the people that like this song uh, uh, will have also a big uh, surprise during the day of the release. Oh, Who knows? So let's see. Let's see. Let's see. No, wait, wait, wait. I mean, no, no, no I mean, spoilers. No spoilers, but watch <laughs> out. Um, Okay, so we, you're right about the whole Viking metal. Um, and so much of Viking metal was for a, a long time. And when it, when it first came out, it kind of exploded. Similar to Diggy Diggy Hole, it was so upbeat and so, you know, chaotic. And, and then that the Viking metal has become more um, themed and storyboard. There's some darkness, some brooding as it matures. Similar to Win Rose, everyone came for Diggy Diggy Hole, but they're staying for the epic stories. Those stories yes. of bravery, of strife, and of sorrow and struggle. And the song, the last song on the album, No More Sorrow, um, is specifically listed as kind of that, the balance between. Talk about No More Sorrow, because this, every, if I say No More Sorrow, th everyone thinks that it's some kind of happy song. It's definitely not. Can you, oh. can you talk about that song? Okay. Let's start from uh, explaining what is a Trolls Layer. Trolls Layer, it's a dwarf that lost the honor. And to get the honor back, he has to find his fate. And uh, his fate is also his doom, because it's... Uh, he has to fight against the strongest and biggest enemy that he can find on the on the battlefield and die against him. So I mean, uh, no more sorrow. It's the let's say the peaceful moment and the rest that a warrior has after he passed away. So it's like uh, the last moments of a warrior 
uh, thinking about what he did and proud to die on the battlefield because uh, he did uh, everything in his hands to to fight until the last moment. So it could be interpreted like this. To be honest, what I thought, I mean, uh, uh, was not like this. To, to make these lyrics, uh, I had to recall some feelings. I mean... Uh, yeah, you can you can see whatever you want in these lyrics because it's very personal, uh, and you can see probably unfortunately a little bit of depression. You can see uh, dark feelings, uh, but you can also I got inspired by by my private life, and uh, I was thinking about someone arriving till the last moment. Uh, because of a sickness, maybe, who knows? And, uh, uh, you know, watching uh, the whole story of his life and not regretting any single moment. Because uh, until the end, he fought, uh, you know, like a warrior. So it's not, uh, nothing was wasted. No, 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 no time was, uh, you know, not L worthy. Living, living life to its fullest extent what was the legacy that was left after? Did did that warrior's life mean something after they're gone? What did they take with them? What did they leave behind? It's very self-reflective. Um, I have to ask before we talk about tours and things like that. Dwarves in space. You have to explain that because we all, okay. when it came out, we were like, we were like, in space? Yes, in space. So explain how that worked out because we all okay. want to know. <laughs> we, are, we are surely talking about rock and stone. I mean, that, that became one of our biggest success because if we watch the numbers on Spotify every month, I mean, it, it's listened like uh, almost like diggy diggy all. I mean... Uh, it's something crazy for the short time that is released. So we are very, very happy about it. And uh, let's say that we we got inspired 100% from the game Deep Rock yeah. Galactic, that it's a game where the dwarves go into space and explore new planets to collect treasures, minerals, to, go, to fight monsters, you know, stuff like this. So... It's a standalone song, let's say, because it's the, the one that is different from the others in the album. And uh, we are not going to make uh, doors in the space in the future, probably. <laughs> I mean, yeah, because it's a cliche, no? Every power metal band, when they don't know what to do anymore, they go in the space. I don't like it. I mean, <laughs> it's bull. It's bullshit. Well, you no. know what? It's, it's funny. You, sometimes you have to have a throwaway. Because as much as people love Diggy Diggy Hole, that was not my first song for you guys. Michael Dietz is a blacksmith and a D&D &D friend of mine that lives in Portland, Oregon. And his son, David, got a chance to do a request on one of my streams. And, he, and I was like, okay, David, what song do you, want me, do you want me to do a reaction to? This kid said, Winrose. And I was like, okay. And he goes, Diggy Diggy Hole. And I went, okay. And he went, dance remix. And I went, what? So yeah. you, you know that sometimes you don't, sometimes you just do something that's just to make people go, wait, yeah. wait, wait, what? But, uh, but, uh, but uh, I, I know it. And uh, probably you remember that I answer also to your, to your video. <laughs> Yeah. But I don't I, know if it's appropriate now to remember. It's to still that. there. It's it's one of my favorites. But uh, yeah. I, I just no. I just know that you know when we like you said that this this one single, yes, it is dwarves in space. Yes, it is centered around a video game. It's not part of the story of Troll Slayer. But like you said, it became a, a very big success for you guys on Spotify. I think it's because it's not what people expect, and it makes people go, "Did you see this?" And then when they share it, all of a sudden that person goes in, listens to Diggy Diggy Hole, the dance remix, or, or you know, Dwarves in Space. Yes. And then because they got in with that, they're like, wait a minute, 
the rest of this stuff is so epically awesome, I'm in. And then all of a sudden you have a Winrose fan that may have gotten pulled in by the funny or the off count or something that's kind of wild, but then they settle in and realize that it's just beautiful, and then they're in. You know which was uh, the the funniest part of make diggy diggy or remix video? <laughs> Gee, <laughs> I, was... I don't know. Was it was it was it the Goblin DJ or was it the no? Uh, the... No, it was the the logistic before because I had to go in uh, all these kind of nightclubs to find the dancers. No, that one. So I was going around. And these girls was coming, was <laughs> coming to me. Hey, hi, honey, how you doing? And I was like, no, I don't look for this stuff. Oh, I look no. to dancers for make my video. Yeah. And one time, one time, I also brought my ex-wife to my, one of these nightclubs. My favorite part about that, you're like, okay, so rock star, metal okay. lead singer, goes into club looks for dancers dancers come up they're like we would love to be in your video and you're like cool put this goblin mask on what yeah <laughs> it's like, wait, wait, this isn't what you thought but here we go so it works out okay so tell us about okay you've got some big touring you just talked about how the tour is coming up literally this week right when the right when the album drops tell us what the tour schedule is like for the rest of the year okay the we don't have anything released yet for the rest of the year, but will be for the first, let's say, part of the year more uh, quiet because we have to uh, settle uh, all the stuff, you know, uh, and uh, sort out all the stuff. And then I, I see already that there will be an intense uh, summer full of festivals and then uh, in fall 2025, there will be a, probably the headliner tour. And then in 2026, the headliner tour all over the world, let's say. First, we start always from uh, Europe. But it's still uh, to, you know, it's, we still have to decide it with the management because yeah, we have to understand. It's funny. Um, I know people are looking at you guys now, not as just some kind of, yeah, they're, they're a dwarf metal band. And the reason why they don't is because of the impact your band made when you came through North America, when you go through Europe, they're watching, they're seeing how, even if you're not the headline act over these last couple of years, the crowd goes nuts because the crowd knows every song they're singing, they're dancing they're and they see it. There's something about I, I we a, a headliner may sell tickets, but when the crowd gets there, and it, I don't know what it is about Italian bands, but I saw Dragon Force, and I'm thinking, wow, people came, they bought a ticket because it's Dragon Force. Nano War Steel comes out, you know those crazy guys. They come out, steal the show, because they're not yeah. just comedy; they're really good musicians. And the show is, the whole crowd is in. The crowd may not even know the songs, but by the end of that performance, they are hooked. And that's the same thing I hear about Winrose. There's something about certain bands that have a connection with the crowd. Your band is one of those. So if you do get a chance, no matter where you are in the world, if you see the word Winrose on a playbill, whether it be headlining or as part of a tour, like a group of tour, do not miss that show and show up early because don't yeah, do like it, this guy that yeah. missed two times the show. <laughs> 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 okay, so what what okay, so we've also seen before we I know we're gonna wrap this up, but before we go, one quick question. Um everyone has seen the meme on social media, the video where you guys are in the airport and yeah. fans are wearing Winrose gear and you guys are standing right behind them and they don't realize it's you until you say hey and then they freak out. Do you find it's more interesting that when fans see you guys, they freak out, or do you guys freak out more than them because you're like, they're fans of us? Do you guys? How do you guys? Do you guys freak out when you see fans in places that you don't expect? I, I, to be honest, uh, for me, it's something that I'm proud of. I mean, uh, I always, uh, I'm always stopping with everyone that I see with the Windrows, uh, uh, with the Windrows T-shirt because. Uh, this is actually what I would like. Now, if I was a, if I'm a fan of a of a big band, and they find me 
at the airport and they stop me. I mean, for me, it will make my day, but probably will will be also an experience that you can tell to your son or to your, you know. I mean, uh, it's you create a unique and uh, uh, epic moment for for these persons that, and for you, is just uh, ten seconds, uh, one minute to to, to change to your life. Them, you know, yeah. So I mean, uh, I like to do this kind of stuff because uh, I think that I I make them uh, very happy. So <sighs> and in the. Particularly in that moment, uh, it was not in an airport. It looks like, but it was seventy thousand tons of metal. Oh, okay. so we were in, to get on the we boat. We were in Miami. Yeah, to get on the boat, there was the metal scanner. You know the scanners, yeah. and uh, I, I was like, "Hey, nice t-shirt, no?" And they are like, "Ah, oh, thank you." And then the guy realized, and he was like, "Ah, oh, what, what the fuck?" You, you do, you do dress pretty specifically on stage. So when you're just in a t-shirt with a backpack, you look yeah. a little different. Yeah, and I, I'm not also someone that looks like a metal head, you know. I, I'm always with flip-flops, shorts, and uh, t-shirt, you know. I mean, I, I don't care. I don't I don't want to look like a metal head because I don't have to, to you know, to show the people that I'm part of something. No, I know who I am, so... If you know me, you know me. If you don't know me, it's okay. It's awesome. You will know me because when you get to the show, oh my God, that guy was behind me in the line of the metal detector. Everybody, <laughs> <laughs> Francesco, uh, the lead singer of Winrose, you guys are absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for your time today. Have a wonderful release. October 4th, are we ready? We're not. We're not ready, but it's coming this week. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, and see you next time in the U.S., guys. Thanks. Hey, everybody. It's Old School Nerd. I have the privilege to sit down with Francesco, the lead singer of Winrose. I've had a conversation with him before, but we're coming back full circle again. They have a new album coming out tomorrow called Troll Slayer. We're going to talk about this album. We're going to talk about all the different things that have happened to this band. Yes, Diggy Diggy Hole remixes, the dance parties, the unique live shows. And yes, we are going to talk about the thing that everyone wants to know about when it comes to Troll Slayer. Dwarves in space? <laughs>